City Clerk, can I get a roll call? Yes, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Council Members uh, Daniel Damien. Uh, so I'll make a motion to excuse Council Member Daniel Damien and Council Member Monica Garcia. Can I get a second? Any objections? No. Continue, City Clerk, please. Thank you. Council Member Paul Hernandez. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Alejandra Avila. And Mayor Emanuel Estrada. Here, thank you for that. City Clerk, is there anybody looking to make a public communication? Mm, I believe not, no. Okay. So at this moment, we move on to our open session, and it's a uh, policies and procedure presentation by Helen Hernandez uh, and April Rojo. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, here to revisit our um, renaming policy for the City of Baldwin Park. Um, just want to recapture a few things. Um, the last time we met, we got some great feedback, so we took that all into account. We reviewed um, the sources that we had come up with and revised a few things. Um, some points to know were things that you mentioned were um, you particularly would like to not include our trees, so we did not include trees at this time, so trees are separate from this policy. This policy would be strictly for streets and facilities. Um, it's very simple and not complicated, which was a request as well. Also, the use of committee input as opposed to strictly city council. And then um, some form of lottery, which is where we still would like some more feedback or an appointed department to host and coordinate that lottery, which we did not clarify clearly. Um, so today we're just going to highlight a few things. Um, the actual policy was provided to you in your council packets. Um, but if you don't have a copy, we do have extra copies with us. As well as previously, we did not um, provide you an application, which we have created. So we have copies of the application and the potential policy with us as well. If anyone wants a physical copy of that, we have that. Councilmember Hernandez, <clears throat> both the application and the policy? Great. We'll get that out to you. Um, so just to highlight again, one more time, we're going to go with our purpose was just to create a uniform policy. Previously, we don't have a policy in place for this. Um, and renaming our facilities is an honor. Um, we do have a few things that are named after people. Um, for example, the Esther Schneider Community Center is named after our wonderful um, founders of In-N-Out. So Esther Schneider, which is a wonderful young lady um, who's no longer with us, but she was an amazing woman who did a lot of um, a lot of foundation work, a lot of community advocacy. So when that name facility was named, it was named her during the process of her fundraising the capital improvement campaign for that particular facility because there was already a park there. So the committee that um, built the facility, they named it after her. So it wasn't um, necessarily strictly a council decision, but it was a community input back in the days. Gosh, the building's like 35 years old now. Yeah, 88. So, um, so things like that. So, but there wasn't a particular policy. So this policy actually gives us some guidelines. Um, that we'll talk about, um, but the guidelines, just to give you a sense, um, we do want to establish um, legacies because it's very important. So Esther Snyder, or er, es, Harry and Esther are both very integral. When people think of Baldwin Park, they definitely think of in and out right? So um, that contributes to the honor and legacy of our community in Baldwin Park. <clears throat> just as a general overview, um, the committee and the people that go through the policy portion will be the ones that provide the recommendation for the final approval. So it wouldn't be the first, second approval. It's going to go through a committee and a chair review before it reaches city council. Um, but city council will be the one to appoint which designee, uh, depending on the department or the type of um, renaming that's going to take place. Um, something that was recommended in a lot of policies, we looked at college policies, um, school districts, we looked at park districts and municipalities, and multiple um, policies did state not to rename anything after a current seated official. Um, so we do have that in our policy here today. And then also the qualifications um, apply to all types. And we'll go over the qualifications in a few minutes. But everything is nice and short and sweet. And so we'll give you a quick recap of that as to what's in here. OK, I'll be going over facilities. Uh, any public building, recreational facility, and park. New facilities shall start the naming process um, early in the project development. Areas within existing facilities shall include point of entries, rooms, patios, walkways, trails, picnic area, sports field, and um, they may follow the application process. Commemorative items shall follow application process as well, fountains, lobbies, and physical features. And again, like Helen mentioned, trees are excluded from this policy. Uh, street names shall be unique and distinct. 
um, they shouldn't um, resemble a, a specific um, a prior street name. They shall be reflective of the community, natural resources, community organization, or name after a person of significant contribution, and that is uh, specified in the application process. Uh, street names in a housing subdivision shall be selected within the same theme throughout, and uh, derogatory names shall not be allowed. Types of significant impact or contributions. Um, again, this is uh, the qualifications for a proposed name change. Protect natural or cultural resources. Provide contribution to the betterment of a specific facility or park. Advancement of recreational opportunities associated with positive impact or economic development. Person or organization that has a positive impact on lives in Baldwin Park. Volunteer service over 10 years or more and a one-year waiting period um, after their deceased. Okay, the application. Um, as you can see, the application is extremely simplified now. It's two pages, um, and majority of it falls on the a nominator. So the nominator will provide us with which qualification they qualify for. So for example, um, Esther Snyder, she is deceased. It's been more than one year, so obviously she would qualify. She did um, contribute to the betterment of our community. She helped to advance recreational resources. And again, she also provided um, assistance with economic development. So she actually kind of is an overachiever. But um, that's just an example of the type of person we would like to make a significant impact on our community before we propose their name to be nominated. Um, and she, I mean, the 10 years of service is for ideally if it's a volunteer who maybe not the entire community knows, but if someone puts in 10 years of volunteerism at our senior center serving meals and helping people, that's definitely a significance to us and the betterment of our community, especially our seniors who appreciate that. So those are the qualifications. Um, the other side is um, the second page shows um, where to give biographical information. Um, obviously, we'd love to make sure that they are a Baldwin Park resident. Um, that is not a requirement. Um, some things to consider were like, for example, in a college district, um, people didn't live like in the city that the college was in, but they bettered this, the college. So it was a consideration that some of our volunteers do come to our senior center from other cities. So being a resident wasn't a requirement. Um, although it's probably highly desirable, I guess we would comment on. But if someone is of significant civic involvement in our Rotary Club or our Senior Club, or if they've been super involved within the activism of our churches here, we want to be able to honor anyone who's made a significant impact in our community because that would just be the right thing to do for someone who goes above and beyond to help us with the economic plan. Um, an example would be Mr. Bembo, like people that who have done like 25, 30 years of service in our community. Um, if we did a residence only type of application, we would exclude several people in our community. So that wasn't in here. It's just something I wanted to highlight that that's not in here for obvious other reasons. Does anyone have any questions? Um, <coughs> uh, I just want to say those are, are great points that you put on there. Um, on the facilities, if we name it after an elected official, can we also wait one year? after they have left office. And also, um, when we name a facility or a street, make sure there's only one facility or street or whatever is named after a person. But other than that, I like everything I see in here. So in terms of like one item in the city? Yes, okay. after a person. One location. Um, just for clarification, Mayor Pro Temp, are you, is that an addition to, that would be under section B1C, because here under C it says no facility shall be named or renamed after an individual until at least one year following the death of such an individual. Are you adding, um, just for my clarification, I think for staff's clarification, is that to also add uh, is that to do away with a living elected official or former elected official that it should be at least one year? After they af leave office. After they do. Okay, so they don't have to be dead. No. <laughs> okay. No, not because necessary. right now uh, that section C uh, <coughs> speaks to exactly that right now. So there's no clarification. If so, 
if staff could just clarify that. Um. Actually, yes, you're correct. So as this reads right now, it does say that no facility or street name until after they've been deceased for one year. But we can change it to say after shall be office. after the, one year. I'm sorry. One year after they leave office. One year after they leave office. Okay, we can update that and remove the word death and put one year after they remove, re have, wait. Yes. <laughs> so the death part is the included. part that, okay, so change that into one year after they've left office or. Yes. Well, you, you can leave deceased because we're speaking. Because we still do want a, a waiting yes. period after deceased. Yes. Because we don't want it to be an emotional decision. We're hoping for more of a thoughtful process. Mm -hmm. So there, there may be a member that we feel feel we should name a facility and maybe they pass away, but we give a year to make that decision after they, they're deceased. And when it comes to an elected official leaving office, wait at least a year that they have left office for, the, for us to name a facility or a group. To so we can update to a community member for a deceased and then end and end any appointment visual to wait when you're waiting period after they've left office? Is that the direction? Yes. And it, I agree yes. with that. Yes. Either or, so yes. either no, it's a community either. member, no. one year death, and any elected official that one, has one year waiting period after they've left office. No, but it does, we can name <laughs> it after a, just to clarify, we can name a community uh, facility after a community member, it doesn't mean they, they have to be deceased, but let's no. say somebody, not right. Not the way it's written right now. Right. So that's why I'm clarifying. That's okay. The, so we can name. Which it, would you prefer? I, I would like to. So let's say we we find out about a community. Like in this case, let's let's give Mr. Jack White an example. He passed away, and they he, he had already had a facility named before he passed away. Mm -hmm. So they were able to name him, the facility. After he left office, he was still alive and then named the facility. Oh, okay. But let's say he would have passed away first. We would have waited a year before we name a facility. So the person can still be alive okay. and name a facility, but not be a, a, an elected official necessarily. So I would understand. Am I making sense? You are. So what that would, yes. as I under, understand yeah. it, that section of the death would be essentially removed. So under qualifications, if they've done um, one of the other items, so it's just an option. If the individual is deceased, it would be one year after they've deceased. So right. it's not an emotional decision. But if they've also just done a significant lasting contribution, so that a, section C would be the one we would update and remove that um, criteria because that doesn't make the finality of it. So we'll update this and we can resubmit it. Okay. Yes, and uh, Mayor and Council members, we will bring this back as a form of policy to a subsequent City Council meeting, and at that point, the City Council will have the option to approve and or provide additional direction. Perfect. Um, and just one last item. As you're going through this document, uh, starting on under Section B, uh, you use starting on Section C, I'm sorry, B... B, <laughs> uh, B, C, uh, you have no facility slash street, so you just need to remove the street parts under this because under the title, under B Section B, it's naming of city facilities. Um, so we just want to be consistent with the documentation that we're doing here. So we add streets to B? No. Uh, no, you have it right now. You have three categories, as I understand it. Uh, city facilities. Mm -hmm. City streets, streets and then city um, anemones or Correct. monument things. Right now, under sec, starting in sec, under section oh. B, you have. I think it's a typo. Yes. Okay, so I just want to make sure that that's that's clear. Um, the other part was uh, just share with us what are the steps should uh, the council need to remove uh, a name of a street? Um, removing a street. I, I could probably uh, jump in on that one. I don't believe we have a formal policy, a formal policy uh, to name or not name or to unname a street. I'd have to uh, refer that to Sam, but I don't believe we have a formal policy. Do we, Sam? That is correct. There is no formal policy. So I, I think it would be the council's discretion to uh, coordinate that uh, element. I would, excuse me if I may. Uh, no, thank you. I would consider adding that to this policy only because, again, 
Um, <laughs> how do I be sensitive to this? <laughs> um, we just want to have a process. Should the community or residents wish to remove names or whatever the case may be there um, is a in the future, should that ever be the case? So that way it's under. Um, you can put that under. There is one that has streets. a. Or if you're going to change a street name, you have to let the businesses and residents know of that city, of that street, city street. So what, it what was. Page is if I could interject as well, we may not need to come up with a specific uh, verse of how we're going to do that. We could probably work with staff and if needed, the city attorney. And when we bring back the policy to the city council in a sus subsequent meeting to approve, we could have that revision included. Perfect. I will take your lead on that, Manny. And I just, just to add, I Thank know you. that it's always easier to name streets when we create new streets versus an existing street. I recall when Fraser Avenue, they wanted to rename it, and we had a lot of uh, community members not happy with that because it's a big process to change the, with the post office and to change mm -hmm. everything. So I remember at that time there was a lot of people speaking out against changing an existing street. So I would consider, I think it would be easier to name new streets after people rather than changing the name of a street completely that's just a little more complicated. And that's what I recall. Okay, we will take this um, and revise this and submit it for approval later. Does anyone have any other additional feedback? Yeah, so I think, I know we were talking about, it says, um, says no street slash or what does it say no facility slash street <coughs> so i think you can keep that there because it does it's it's specifying that you can't name a street and a building after the same person yes right so in the streets it doesn't mention that mm -hmm. for example esther schneider would no longer qualify to change Baltimore park boulevard to snyder boulevard she already has a facility named right. after so it's a facility not a street you could have only one item named after her. or like ramona is named ramona so nobody could name a building ramona after Ramona, she's Who was named. Ramona? Is that a real thing? I don't think that's a real no, no. thing. <laughs> I'm just, just making stuff it's up. A, it's a women's <laughs> name, Ramona. <laughs> no, but there, I mean, there's, there's like a popular Ramona in every Ramona city. Ramona and <laughs> And that's exactly what I meant of only yeah. naming one facility or street, whatever it is we're going to name after a person and not have more than one uh, facility or street named after a person. Just we, we can make that more clear in the qualifications. Thank you. No Excellent. Thank you. I know this has been a lot of work for you guys. You've done a lot of research, so I really appreciate it. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Helen, I'm sorry. Did you mention benches, street and park benches? What um, yes, under commemorative items, um, park benches right now, um, we don't have a policy to name those, but we do um, informally, we allow people to plant trees throughout our city or in Morgan Park that we do provide a small plaque. Um, we've had some coaches and local um, volunteers who have passed. That would fall under commemorative items? We already do have their, okay. maybe like a five by seven size plaque mm -hmm. okay. in our um, park already. So benches are part of like the tree procedure? Um, yeah, because that's kind of like a uh, Yeah, yeah. okay, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah. makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, are we are we all done with that presentation? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, we are all done. Also, like to thank uh, Helen Hernandez and April Rawl as they walk away. Thank you very much. Great, thank you yes. for all your work. Yeah, thank you to Parks and Parks and Recs. Uh, gets you know, I, I don't think we see it enough, but Parks and Recs takes care of ex an lot. exponential amount of things. So you know, a big thank you, to, of course, to Helen and April and and Manny and all of his team. Thank sure. you, Mayor. We'll definitely share that with the team, and they will be back for the 7 o'clock recognition. So thank you. Good, thank good. you. All right. So I believe at this point we are ready to recess to closed session. Um, so I, I believe we'll move on to closed session at this point. There's no other comments regarding the study session. Okay. And then for the record, Council Member Garcia has joined us. A city clerk, so you can please note that. And then at this point, we will re uh, recess to move. Uh, I can't even speak today. We will move to closed session. Thank you.